focus on is really helping our clients to monetize their dreams, um, helping them get to the next level and everything they want to do. So today I'm going to kind of just like put y'all on some resources that you can use. Um, so as business owners, it's hard, it's hard work to kind of like brand your business, be consistent in your business. Um, and make sure that you have everything you need to be successful. So what I try to teach my clients what to do is like automate their systems, um, just have everything well branded to make sure everything looks great, um, no matter what they do and where they go. So so, much, so many people think they have to have thousands of dollars to brand their business or like to, you know, just have products or digital products or do certain things or make additional streams of income. But you really, you don't need a whole bunch of money what you just need is a hard work ethic and the ability to research and to sit down and learn stuff so i want to kind of give y'all some brand hacks tonight but first i want y'all to put in the comments y'all's revenue goals for 2021 how much y'all want to make this year um i said i was going to I, my revenue goal is really high but my my main revenue goal for the month is fifty thousand dollars um and so that's what i said that my revenue goal was for 2021 i want to make 50k every month um, so I just want y'all to kind of put in a chat like what y'all's revenue goals are for 2021. If you can, or if somebody wants to speak about their goals, they can as well. To 20K, okay, okay. That's definitely doable. Anybody else want to put their revenue goals in the chat? So we can see 80 to 100K. Okay. All right. So one of the things I want to talk to you guys about um, is using the power of the internet. So we all are on social media. We all have multiple social media accounts. Okay. 500K. Woo. You like me. That was my uh, goal for the year. We're going to get there at 100K, 20K. But, um, so a lot of people use social media just to scroll, compare themselves to others, or not really using it for your advantage when it comes to your brand or your business. So what I want to help you guys do today is not just brand your dreams, but also monetize your dreams um, and giving y'all like some resources and tools to do that. So I told myself like this year, like you spend a lot of time on social media posting um, for the Girl by Sweets page. I try to post two or three times a day. I've been slacking because I've been just doing a lot of stuff. But the more you post, the more traction that you get. And because all the algorithms are off, you have to be consistently posting on social media, but the problem is consistency, right? It takes us a lot to keep posting and creating posts and shooting content. Like nobody wants to sit down and do stuff. Like that's our generation. We always wanna be on the move. We don't ever wanna just sit down, focus and get stuff done. So you have to be able to have resources and tools that can help you move a little bit faster when it comes to your business. So when it comes to posting, um, there's different websites and things that you can use to make sure that you have everything you need. My number one go-to website for branding and making flyers and making posters is canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. On Canva, the sky is the limit. You can make moving images, you can make worksheets. I have full-blown workbooks. All my workbooks I make in Canva, even my, my new workbook, Dreamfidence, like this product I made in Canva myself. Um, I printed it through a book company that prints in 48 hours. It has raised print. Like people don't understand the power of these free tools and resources, right? So if you're a service-based business, a product-based business, you should have a workbook, an ebook, something that you should be able to sell in your sleep. If you're not waking up to a sale every day, then that's a problem because you have so much in you, in your mind that you can make all your goals, everything come true. Like you should have money coming from your dreams every single day. If you have a website, if you um, have any platform where you're selling stuff or doing something, you should be waking up to sales every day, right? So the first step in doing that is creating your digital products. Okay, well, see, I don't have a budget for a graphic designer or I'm not creative enough. I don't have stuff to do because people bring excuses all the time. You might not be that person, but you are able to use YouTube. Every single thing that you need is on YouTube. I want to create an ebook. How do I create an ebook? It's on YouTube. If you can, you can Google anything you want to do in the world. So like the excuse of, I don't have the creative, the creative thing. I don't know what to do. You definitely can't use that excuse no more in the age of 2021, because literally anything that you want to do for your brand or business, you can Google. So 
if our revenue goals are 20k a month 100k a year 500k you're going to have to have seven most you have to have seven streams of income plus more to make sure you making making it so if you're still working for your nine to five that's one stream of income for you count your nine to five is one of your streams right so another stream of income for you if you have a, a service or your product would be uh, a service-based business or a product-based business would be digital products so like i said i designed this whole workbook in canva right so it probably took me like now that i'm good at canva it probably took me like three two to three hours to design that book and send it to print right so for two to three hours of my time sitting down focusing putting all my content into the canva and what i needed to do now my projections is my books are $30, right? So my pre-order started and I haven't really been promoting and posting, but I was filming today for that. So I probably sold like maybe close to like 32 copies, right? So for three to four hours, I'm not about to do no math because that's not for me. So for three to four hours, I sell 32 copies at $30. That's like quadruple plus, plus, plus the time I put in, right? My printing cost is a little bit high because I'm extra. I got raised print, but that money, I already made back my money for me just sitting down at the computer focusing. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of products can I create? Ebooks, workbooks, what can I create that I can use to take my business to the next level? You could do an ebook and post it on your social media or put it on your website for $5 and just promote it. Keep promoting this. Oftentimes we just be afraid to keep promoting stuff or keep showing people stuff. But my mentor says you have to be relent relentless in your brand or your business, right? So like, I don't care who unfollows me or who has something to say, I'm going to promote these books to the death of me because one person seeing this post for my brand and my business and my dreams, me getting one sale, that means that post work, right? So you want to use resources like one, I told y'all Canva, it's a free resource. If you can upgrade your membership to Pro, Canva Pro for $12.99 a month, you get access to all the video, the stock videos, the stock photos, the music, you can make podcast clips. You could do everything in Canva, but when you upgrade your Canva, mem Canva membership, you get so much more stuff. So one, Canva. Two, Fiverr. Fiverr is like the business or brand person dream. Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can literally get websites made in 24 hours. When it comes to Fiverr, you can get logos made in 24 hours. You could pay extra and get flyers back in five to six hours. People are be sleep on Fiverr because they feel like they want to talk to a person. With me, I don't care. I see your work. I'm going to pay you with Fiverr. They give you a, a satisfaction guarantee. So if they don't give you back your work, you can get your money back. So think about it. Um, Richard Brunson, if y'all don't follow him, follow Richard Brunson. He does marketing funnels. And he says all the time, what is your opportunity cost? Is it cheaper for you to do it or is it cheaper for you to pay somebody to do it? So what is your opportunity cost when it comes to building stuff for your brand or your business? If you spend $10 on a logo that takes somebody 24 hours, but it would have took you five hours, why not invest the money? So as, as business owners and brand builders, we have to ask ourselves, what are, our, what are our opportunity costs? If you don't have the time to do something, then you pay somebody to do it. If you don't have the finances to pay somebody to do it, then that means you can Google or figure it out. And Fiverr is one of the cheapest resources where you can talk to people globally to get stuff done. Like I use Fiverr so much. My website designer on there will, yeah, that is a good book. <laughs> oh, I got it too. And um, Tiffany.com secrets, if you haven't read that one, um, and how to build a funnel in 30 days. I got it in my office. So if you need it, you could have it. So definitely check those books out. Um, but my website uh, person at Fiverr, he's from Pakistan. And he'd be like, do you have work, my friend? Do you have, like, they're looking for stuff. I can literally pay him $5 to do a website and he's gonna do it. Like, so whatever resources that you need to build your digital products, to build your brand and business, you can find that out, you can figure it out. So what are some of the things that are stopping you guys from creating digital products or stopping you guys from creating a stream of income from your digital products? Anybody? I was going to type it and I realized okay. that my mic was on. So I'm just going to say it and then cut my mic off. Okay. Um, so I think for me, the biggest thing has been um, because I have so much in my head, not really knowing exactly which thing that I have mm -hmm. should I put into a digital product. That's really been it 
over the amazing, um, um, sorry, that's an amazing problem to have. When you have a lot of stuff in your head, that means that you probably have like 10 eBooks in your head. And so people overthink stuff. A lot of times we overthink our brand or business, but it's also so simple. I was talking to my friend today. She was just like, well, I just don't know this and that. And I was like, girl, just do it. Like at the end of the day, you put something out there, it can either be successful or it cannot, or it can fail. If it can fail, fix it. But you never know if it can succeed or fail if you don't put it out there. We talk ourselves out of our blessings. We talk ourselves out of our next level because we feel like it has to be perfect. We feel like we have to have a, a LLC and a trademark and a patent. By the time you did all that, you done missed out on money because you like, oh my God, it has to be perfect. Like nothing is ever going to be perfect. I learned this from a girl who makes probably like close to 10K every couple of days. She told me, put it out there. Like... Even if it's a typo in there, put it out there. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I didn't edit or proofread, proofread my journal. Not to, I was just trying to get it out. I just needed to see it. I needed to physically touch it because I knew if I physically touched it, then I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go harder for this campaign. That means I've accomplished something. I executed something. So don't, don't overthink something. Don't think that it has to be perfect because really perfectionism is a form of stagnation because it's like you want stuff to be be done and you trying to get this done get this done and you still haven't did it so you're sitting there on like your intellectual property when you could be putting that out to somebody else so if you have a whole bunch of ideas that means that you have a lot of ebooks you can put out and so tiffany of course i know you personally so i do know that you have a lot of information in your head so that just means if you got to put out a five page ebook you can do that ebooks are not meant to be books they're just meant to give people general information that's why you see five step guides seven step guys, 10 step guys. Like I tell, I was joking with my friends, but I was like, Hey y'all, if I put out an ebook, know that I need y'all to help me out. Like I'm, I'm, I need to, to get some funds. Like I'm serious. Like that's one of the easiest ways to make money. And once you sit down, write it and design it, you never have to do it again. You put the link on your website, it automatically sells. So don't talk yourself out of your next level or creating products or creating things because you feel like it has to be perfect. Nothing is ever going to be perfect because we're not perfect. We're not going to be perfect. So you know, just do it. Just try it. I, you know, I tell my clients all the time, like I had a meeting with a girl today and she was like, I just, I just don't want to put my name on my products. And I was just like, Hey, you either want to do it or you don't. Like, I don't really have time to sit back and forth and go here with you. Like we either going to do this or we not. And she was like, you right, you right. We're going to get it done. So she's going to change the name of her business and we're going to make her beauty hair collection. But just sitting there talking to her, I was just like, if you have it in you to do it, just do it. Like, I don't, I didn't understand like why she was second guessing it, but I understand that we are human and we don't want to fail. But the, the powerful thing about failure is that you can change it and tweak it. So before I had Girl Boss Suites, the co-working space, I had open for business. It was a female co-working space in the city of Atlanta. And um, I had to bow out of that partnership because it wasn't working for me. So I had a co-working space before in 2015, but it didn't work out. But I just put it back in my heart and put it on the shelf. And then what happened? God bought it back to me. And now I have Girl Boss Suites Atlanta. I have Girl Boss Suites Houston, working on Girl Boss Suites Charlotte. But imagine if I would have gave up on my dream in that moment of like, I failed at that business. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to just do it better next time. I'm going to just let her have it. It's, so, it's hard to let our dreams go and our baby go sometimes. But sometimes it's meant to let go so you can do something bigger. So not all failure is bad. It's a chance to just, you know, innovate and um you know, and do something bigger, but you can't talk yourself out of your next level by thinking like, you know, it has to be perfect. So for all my perfectionists in this group, let's just get it out there. Let's just see how it sells. Let's just see how it works, especially if you have apps and resources that can help you create and design. And then the whole, like three hours for me to do a book and put it on my website and make 32 orders. That's crazy. Like I made my money back, I'm good. I could really stop promoting this, but I'm not because I really have a goal of a hundred books. Slit my goal is a thousand, but because I'm so busy, I'm not going to push myself that hard. But, it, you know, just put it out there. So Tiffany, every idea you got, make an ebook for it, make a workbook for it, you know, and just make the money. The worst thing that can happen is you don't hit sales for all of them. But I feel like getting one sale in your business is a means somebody wants you or wants your product or service is a great opportunity. Like that means, okay, at least one person, if you can reach one person a day, that's still money. So just keep that in mind when you working on your business or brand. Um, another thing that I want to talk to you guys about for social media consistency. So Canva, you could do your posts. People always say out of time, well, how do I post consistency consistently? How do I make stuff look nice? So Canva now has a scheduler 
on there. So once you create your Instagram post, your Facebook post or whatever, you can schedule your content through um, Canvas Content Scheduler. So you really have no excuse because you can go on there, create your content and put it in a scheduler and it'll post for you. It'll remind you to post. And the amazing thing about Canva is that once you put your logo in there, it'll automatically pick up your brand colors. Your brand colors will be in your brand kit. So every time you create a new graphic for your business, Canva has already so already has your color saved. So it's like, it does everything for you. So if you ever feel like, you know what? I can't create those nice looking posts and I don't know what to do. Like Canva automatically does everything for you. Um, and if you not, um, if you don't enjoy Canva and you a little bit advanced and you use Photoshop or anything else, there's an app called Planoly, um, planoly.com. It literally schedules out all your Instagram posts. It'll give you the grid. It'll give you everything for it. And it also comes with a content calendar. And if you need a content calendar, like a planner to um, schedule out your posts, you can put your email in the comments and I'll make sure I email you a content calendar. But it helps so much by planning out your content in advance. For me, I write my captions. When I'm planning out my Instagram, I write my captions and then I take the picture for my captions. Because that helps me because I feel like writing captions is like our biggest, hardest thing. Especially like it blows me when people write captions and they misspell stuff because you can edit your post. So I don't understand why people do that. But I write my captions before I shoot my content. And that's been very successful for me and my clients because captions is one of the biggest things you overthink. So that's my advice. Write your caption from your caption. Choose what you're going to shoot or choose what your picture going to be. But with Planoly, they give you a content calendar and you can plan it out for the whole, you could do 30 days, six months, a year, a week. Like it literally does everything for you. So I'll definitely send y'all that content, um, content calendar so that it can help y'all. So we talked about digital products and how you guys can create that if you need help, what um, sites you can go to. Um, we talked about how to schedule our content without doing it ourselves. And that app again was Planoly. Um, you could also do it through Canva. Um, one of the biggest things that people miss out on is email marketing. So y'all know how y'all go to websites and they say you can get 10% off or you go to a website, you can go here and I, you get this free. Yeah, Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Mm -hmm. And I'll type in the other one for you. I got you. I'll type them in for you. Okay, babe. Um, and so you go to the, the website, you see 10% off. You see all those boxes that pop up that subscribe to my mailing list, right? Or you get 5% off. I know I always um, put my email in because I'm, I'm always looking for a good coupon or a discount code. Those are called lead magnets. Um, and that's the one way you grow your email list. Because we so focus on social clubhouse, Instagram and everything, we forget about the good old fashioned email marketing. Emails is real, is real estate. Like it's like gold to get as many emails as possible. That's how you can really get in touch with people because everybody got email addresses, right? So when you see those lead magnets and you go to those websites and you get 10% off, I give you, you give that website your email. They have everything they need from you. Now they can constantly email you coupons and deals and everything. And if it has a catchy subject header, you gonna open it. So if you have an email list and you have a, a, a product or a service-based business and you have emails that you've collected, you need to be sending out an email at least once a week. Just like I got an email from this class today, you want your, whatever you're doing, even if it's inspiration, even if it's products, you want to be sending out an email at least once a week. I know it's hard, but if you have Wix, you have Constant Contact, MailChimp, those email blast systems, you can literally schedule out your emails for the whole year if you wanted to. You can schedule out emails for 30 days in advance, 60 days in advance. What you'll do is go in, make your content in Canva, hire somebody in Fiverr, put in whatever subject that you want to talk, that you want your consumers to know that week and send out an email blast. What does email marketing do for you? It's that next step after social media. So we post and we scroll in. How do you turn that person that's liking your stuff into buyers and you get their attention? You send them an email. So if you want to grow your email list, this is what you can do. You can either put a post on Facebook or Instagram and say, hey, guys, drop your email in the comments. Um, I'm sending out a free, a free coupon for something, right? You, all the emails that you collect, 
put it into your email database in the back of your in the back of your whatever platform you're using. If you don't want to make a post, you can also put the link in your bio, like, hey, go to my website, subscribe to my email, get those. Um, and how do people subscribe to your email? They subscribe to your email. You have all those emails for you to be able to talk to people and contact people. My first email blast I sent out in, I want to say I was like 20. I sent out my first email. It was horrible. Like the pictures weren't right. The, the font was messed up, but I just wanted to be like, you know what? I got a business. I'm in college. I just started my brand and I want to send out an email. So I sent it out. It was horrible. This People was hitting me back. Like, what is this? This is trash. They was going in on me. I felt so bad, like, dang, but I realized, you know, I needed those people to be honest with me. So what did I do from there? I took an email marketing class. I learned how to use MailChimp. I learned how to, you know, send out professional style emails. Um, and I was able to grow my email list. So now that's where most of my pre-orders came from. I sent out an email and people was like, oh, Tierra got a new journal out. I'm about to rock with her because I know her product is good. I trust her. I know she's not going to um, she's not gonna come out with no crap. So my email list is probably around like maybe 3,500 people that actively open, which is not a big email list, but it's big enough for me because I'd rather have a, a high open rate than just have a whole bunch of emails that's like not working. So but my people rock with me. So them, them 3,000 plus people or whatever, they're going to open all my emails. They're going to at least look what I got. And I know I can make like 5 or 10% sales from them opening up my emails. And if you don't have an email marketing system set up, it's another thing that you can Google and YouTube. How do I set up my email marketing? If you have Wix, which is my favorite platform, y'all know, if y'all know me personally, y'all know I vouch for Wix, like to the day I die. Um, so you can literally use your Wix and your website and do like a, a Wix shout out email marketing. And so you probably wonder like, how do I get people to open up my emails? It's the subject, right? So what makes you open up catchy, like what makes you open up emails, catchy headers? So if I really want to sell something, I'll send out an email like, thank you for your purchase. You're going to open an email that says, thank you for your purchase, because you're going to be like, what do I buy? Because I, I don't remember buying nothing. So I kind of do like the whole reverse psychology thing. Um, and if another hack, if you have a problem with writing email headers, you can also Google like an um, a email subject header like writer or content writer they have them on fiverr they have them on google and you can hire somebody to send you um catchy email headers so you want to make sure you have a catchy email header you want to make sure your emails are well branded they look nice you have nice pictures um everything flows consistently and your email marketing will take you to another level so another website that you can use to grow your email list is called active campaign this website will help you um, grow your email list as well as Flowdesk. Flowdesk will give you templates, um, headers, everything you need to grow your email list. Um, this, this guy said, you know, the power, the in internet is so powerful, but not everybody is using it. Yeah, Flowdesk. Not everybody is using it to your advantage. So like I kept, I'm, I'm going to keep saying this. You scroll every day. You like pictures every day. You be in people's stories every day. But is that making you money? How can you monetize that? If you not promoting your business or your brand the way you're liking pictures and looking at people's stories and trolling and scrolling, then that's a problem. You want to have that same energy for your brand or your business. If you're going to be on social media, you might as well be making money from it. You might as well be promoting your brand or your business. It's not about, it's not about being annoying or always promoting or whatever you're doing. It's about like, hey, I have a business. I'm using this free platform to reach more people. And so that's the mindset that you need to have is that, okay, if I'm going to be on social media 12 hours a day, and I hope y'all not spending 12 hours a day on social media, then I'm going to make this amount of money. For those of people that want to make 100K, I know that it's only like 200 and something dollars a day that you have to make to get to that goal. So did you make that $200 today by scrolling? by looking at what everybody else is doing? Did you work on your business? You gotta keep the same energy that you're using to do everything else in your life to really focus on your revenue goals, to really focus on your brand, to really focus on your dreams. And that's what I teach my clients. You want to make your, your brand, your business and your dreams a part of your everyday lifestyle. It should be second nature. Every day when I wake up, pray, talk to God, get my house in order. Like, okay, Sierra, what you doing today? What meetings are you going? Not think about, well, how much do you wanna make today? What clients are you going to follow up with? 
what do you need to be successful today? And I'm always saying, about, okay, you know, this is what I can do. I can make this amount of money. So you have to positively affirm your business and brand. You have to always be innovating and it's going to get hard. I can't come in here and be like, you know, what? it's fun every day making money. Like, no, sometimes I'd be like, okay, my bank account does not reflect my vision. What do I have to do? And I sit in here or be wherever for hours. And I just work on my brand and my business. And I look up free resources and I create email blasts or I'll post a post like your mind should always be in the mindset of how can I elevate my business how can I take my business to the next level how can I execute my dreams because it's it's no point in having a business or a brand if you're not going to take it to the next level and it's a, that's so important about branding it was um a young lady that came up here today she's getting a, a teeth white in space and she was just talking about like I don't want my brand to look like it's on welfare and not to offend anybody if, if you're on the system, but basically what she was saying is that I want my brand to go to the next level. And she was like, she was, expect, um, you know, just paying thousands of thousands of dollars to make her brand go to the next level, but she wasn't getting that back. But the thing about it is, it's not that you have to spend a lot of money. It's just that you want to just be consistent and just make sure your brand aesthetic is the same. So you're using the same brand colors and you can Google your color scheme too. If you have a specific green, Find the color number. How do you find a color number? You Google, okay, this green, what's the color number? I want this type of green. Get your fonts. If anybody be like, hey, Tiara, I want to use CLJ Agency um, brand aesthetic to make something, I can send them a whole folder. These are my fonts. These are my colors. This is my filter. And you want to keep everything the same. So really take out the time to date your business, to get to know your business and figure out like, okay, I got these colors I want, these are my fonts, this is my filters, put that in a folder, put that somewhere where you can always know so your graphic designer can have it, your website designer can have it, your screen printer, whatever, whatever vendor that you're using, like, you just want to make sure everything is consistent. So another thing, this is, this is going to be hard for people to process is that you have to have professional pictures. You cannot be a business owner or a brand builder and you have selfies and you, yo, we see you got your house in the background looking crazy. Like, no, invest in professional images. If you don't have the money to get your professional images, then wipe off your camera lens, go, go get your makeup done, get your hair done, get a haircut and stand on a white wall and, and take you a good picture. I don't recommend it at all. I recommend you saving and work with a professional photographer. But if you don't have it, there's ways around it. You want to have clean white background images because what does that mean? You could put that on your website. You could put that on flyers. Like how somebody is supposed to book you or your business and I can't get a headshot. I never understood that. Like you, I'm trying to come to you and help you with your brand and business, but you don't even have something so simple as a headshot. If you want to go to the next level, you got to prepare for the next level. The more that you prepare yourself to go to the next level is the more you attract. I kept saying like, I want to work with corporate companies. I want to do corporate, I want to do corporate branding classes because just because the corporate company has a brand doesn't mean that the employees understand it. And I kept saying it like, okay, I was like, okay, God, I don't know how you're going to do it for me. I got a lot going on, but can you please start allowing me to see how I can do corporate classes and co corporate workshops. And literally I forgot about that dream or that goal. I forgot about that dream or that goal or whatever. And then he bought it back to me. And today I, I, I'm doing a corporate training on Friday, but I was like, dang, I forgot about that. But what happened? I was prepared. They see my website, they like the way it looked. I sent them my case study. We can't get into case studies tonight because that's like just a whole nother level or something. But if you, I can send y'all my case study. And what a case study is, is like tracking your, um, like what you did for your client. And Tiffany, I'll email you my case study so you could um, show it. I don't know if I could show it on here or not, but I'm gonna show y'all an example of a case study. But basically it's showcasing to your clients or customers what you've done and the progress that you made. Yes, press kits. You need a press kit if you have a public figure brand. Press kits are good, media kits are good. And you can also make those on Canva. They got media kits and press kits. But please don't put together a media kit or a press kit if you don't have a professional picture because that defeats the purpose. And so what you send, you send your press kit out to radio stations, TV stations, and things like that. So you want to make sure that 
you just have the best professional images and you're always prepared to go to the next level. So we can't say we want to make $100,000 and then you get a client that's willing to pay you $5,000, but you don't have enough products. You don't, your brand don't look good. You don't have the capacity. So for Girl Boss Suites, we got co-work boxes, pens, highlighters, all kind of stuff. Do I sell them products every day? I definitely do not. But my thinking process is I have a co-working space. What do people in co-working space need? They need office supplies. So what do I have? Pens and highlighters. How many times you've been somewhere and needed a pen? Somebody pull out that pen, girl by sweets pen. What are they gonna think about? Like, oh, girl by sweets, let me, I might need that space. Let me go see that. Like, you wanna remember, you always wanna be on the forefront of people's minds when it comes to your brand or business. So if you have a bakery and, you know, we got people doing all kinds of events, weddings and everything, you wanna be on people's mind, you might want to give people a refrigerator magnet like what kind of giveaways or trinkets or products that you can have that you people you can always be on people's mind or front front like anybody that got a dream that know me oh i need to execute this dream i'm gonna call tiara because i know she finna help me she gonna put me on why because everything i do when i post is about a dream even if you're having a casual conversation with me i'm gonna ask you about your dream it's just in me I'm always putting my brand or business in the forefront talking about it. So you want to make sure that you have what you need to be able to talk to people. If you have a product, uh, if you're a service-based business, I should be able to get what I need from you. I never understand why makeup artists don't sell lip gloss because that's the, the first thing that come off when you get your makeup done. You got to be a one-stop shop. Think about it. Okay, cool. I do makeup. Some, they're going to eat, drink something and mess their lips up. So if I have a lip gloss, that's an upsell. How can I upsell my brand or business? I sell makeup. So I'm going to create a lip gloss, a lip liner. So that when my client leave and she like her lip color, then she going to buy that from me because I have everything I need to be prepared. So just like Girl Boss Sweets. We have office supplies. We're a co-working space. So if you're whatever business that you got, a hairdresser, you can get custom bobby pins. People want to pin up their hair. So why don't you sell bobby pins? Like you have to kind of think like that. What can I build on for my brand or business that I can still make more money because people are going to go buy that anyway. So I have a, a marketing and branding consultant firm, TLJ Agency. I got pins. I got notebooks. Because every time you talk to me, you're going to write something down. You could have a 10 minute conversation with me and be like, oh my God, I feel overwhelmed. Like Tierra, she, she gave me this whole to-do list. It just happens. So what I have is a notepad. So when my clients look at their notepad, all they're going to see is TOJ agency. I, I need to contact Tierra. I need to get my consultation because now I got more questions because I already gave them a 15 minute free call. So the next step is a consultation. I don't even do free calls no more, but the next step would be the consultation, which is $75. And that doesn't go to your service. Which brings me to another point. Your systems have to be in place, especially if you have a service-based business. You cannot have a service-based business and you don't automate everything. You can't be a consultant and you don't have things in place for people to book you. So if you're a consultant and to talk to you an hour is $100 an hour, it's super unprofessional for you to be like, oh, you could just cash at me for that hour. That looks so unprofessional. You need to have an invoicing system. I you should not do business through Cash App. If you don't have um, an invoicing system, you need to get one. You can use Square and you download Square and you sign up for Square to give you a free card reader. You can use PayPal for invoices. Um, you can use HoneyBook. HoneyBook has a special going on right now for a dollar per month because of Corona. HoneyBook is lit. You can send your proposal, contract and invoice through HoneyBook. It does it for you. So it's one website called honeybook.com. All you have to do is a client requests you, they schedule a consultation. After the consultation, it automatically sends you their proposal. After the proposal, they and their client approves, it sends you a contract. After they sign a contract, it automatically sends them an invoice. How many times have we had clients and we have to do all that stuff ourselves? Or we'd be like, oh, just cash at me, I'm gonna email you later. But think about how easy it would be that one link does everything. You talk to somebody one time for 15 minutes, then they automatically get their proposal, then they automatically get their contract, and you automatically get paid. You just did four steps knocked out all because you sat down for an hour and fixed your system. How easy was that? So you basically, a whole person, you just automated it. 
So the next time you talk to your client is when you in your info session starting them on their services or their packages, right? So you wanna think about how can you make your business easy for you and still be professional? It's in the systems, the client onboarding process. I sat down, I said, my Christmas gift to myself is gonna be for my brand or business. I'm gonna put everything in one place. And that's what I did. So I connected my domain names to the, to the back of my site. So now when I have my consultations on Zoom, I use my Zoom link. I connected it to www.meetwithtierra.com. So all my clients would just go meetwithtierra.com and automatically take them to my personal Zoom room. When I have a, a client that wants to schedule a link to talk to me, dreamwithtierra.com. When I send out my emails like, hey, book your call here. You got a dreamwithtierra.com. You book a call. It automatically charges you to $75. I get the $75 to my account. I get a reminder text two days before, a reminder text 30 minutes before. And I didn't have to do nothing but watch myself get paid and, and talk to them. Because even if I'm out and about, I'm going to get a 30 minute reminder like, oh, your client is on the phone. And that has been one of the best things that I have done was automate my systems in my onboarding process. Because if you're a coach or a consultant and you have services, like, how easy is that to just do everything with one look so one link so you want to make sure that you just put everything in one place um, for your business or your brand and you allow people to be able to contact you and reach you with as a little static as possible because if i'm ordering something i'm gonna go with the person that's making it the most e the the easiest for me right so if i come to you and i'd be like well how do i pay oh well um you could cash at me. Well, I have to pay for my business account. I can't cash at you. I need an invoice. Well, I don't have an invoicing system. You'll lose customers like that. Because people have to be able to write stuff off. Like you, if you want bigger contracts, like I'm talking about like 5,000, 10,000, 20K contracts, you need to have invoicing in place, receipts in place, everything in place. So if anything happened, you got all your paperwork. And it make it so much easier. And you, you don't have to understand how, how legit people will take you by just having a system in place. So before I used to get overwhelmed, like, oh, I'm tired of talking to people. Why do people talk to me? Because 90% of the people that I talk to, they're not going to do what I say. So I'd be irritated and frustrated. But I was like, how do I stop myself from getting mad? I got to put these systems in place. So before even you get the link to pay me or schedule your call, I send you a a questionnaire through JotForm, JotForm.com. JotForm.com will change your life. You can literally customize a questionnaire and take like, and have your clients like do a client intake form. So that's what it is. So I'm asking you, what's your name? What's your business? What's your dream? What's your goals? Like, what do you need help with? What's your budget? Because if your budget is $300 a month and you want all this stuff, then I'm just gonna be like, hey, I'm straight. Like, you know, I'm not gonna say it like that, but like, hey, okay, no, like that's not my client. So like the next question, are you willing to invest $2,500 a month in your brand? Yes or no? So you can know how to treat people and talk to them. Like sometimes we spend all of our time chasing these clients and trying to find customers. But like, imagine just having a form sending them to them and you don't have to waste your time because that's not my client. They don't have, that's not even in the budget. You don't, you don't work people in your, but you don't work people, work with people for their budget. People work with you and pay you what you want to charge them. And then we have to change our mindset because like, oh, well, I just want to please people. I want to make people happy. And I struggle with this too until I woke up one morning with four leases and I was like, oh, I can't be, I can't keep being that nice. Like this is real life. This is my business. I went to school for this. I trained for this. I invest thousands into my business, into coaching, into mentorship, like my website was $1,100. I did not want to pay that, but I understand the quality. I understand what I want to take my business to the next level. So I, you know, I signed up for Forbes workshops. I've done so much stuff. So I am charging what I'm worth because I deserve that because I put professional development into my business. Like if you know me or hang around me, I have my laptop everywhere I go. I'm always working. I'm always trying to progress because I, I see this thing being a Fortune 500 company and as African-Americans, we got to see our businesses being Fortune 500 companies, not mom and pop businesses. That's not our portion. So with having a Fortune 500 company, you got to do a little bit more work. You got to invest a little bit more. You got to put these systems in place so that you can make what you want to make. So when I first started my business, my retainers was like $300. Like 
well, I can't do nothing with that. But at 21, 22, that's some good money. Cause I got, I'm working three jobs. So I was working at Chick-fil-A. I was working in the students and I was working at the daycare and I had TLJ agency. So $300 to me was a relief. You know, I was like, okay, I'm making money. But then I realized five years from there, I was still charging $300, but I was working at Waffle House and operations. So I was making 60K, 70K. So I was like, okay, cool, I could charge that. I sent this one lady my prices and she laughed at me. She was like, oh, wow. She was like, Sierra, I personally know that you're a hard worker. And she was like, this is ridiculous. She's like, if you ever want to take yourself out your business, you got to charge your worth. So I finished my coaching program. I raised all my prices and I um, update, updated my systems. And since I did that, all my retainers have been paid with no problem. And like now it's at the point where I'm waitlisting people because I work hard. I did the work, but now I know my worth and it's not bad working with these people. I don't care about them calling me because they paid me and I feel good about it. So you want to take your business and your brand to such a level that people are not going to question your prices. People are not going to question talking to you like because your system's in place. You look professional. Your brand aesthetic is, a, is right across the board. Your website is easy for me to manage. It's easy for me to walk through. Like you got professional pictures. Your Instagram is inviting. Like you, your link in your bio is cleaned up. It's not cluttered. Like you're not posting crazy or whatever. Like everything just has to be consistent. And these apps and these resources and these tools that I've given you guys, you can use that to grow your email list, grow your following. Um, also, if you need help with hashtags, you can also Google hashtag generators and it'll give you all the hashtags and all the things that you need for your um, brand or business. So if you don't take anything away from this call, just take away that you can literally Google or YouTube anything. If you don't have the finances or the resources to take your brand to the next level, then that means you need to be at the computer figuring it out. If you're not at the point where you can hire a marketing or a PR person, that means you got some work to do. That means that you the marketing person, you the graphic design person. So you need to use these websites and use these tools and these resources and take your brand to the next level. If you can't afford a photographer or a videographer, use your iPhone that you're using to double tap and scroll and take you some good pictures, take some quality videos. You can look on YouTube and see like how you can do certain angles or use certain filters. Like you really have no excuse but to hit your revenue goals. You can't put, I want 500K, I want 100K and you ain't did nothing all day. Or I want 500K, I want 100K, you ain't posted, but you posted in your story like, no, like you really want to, the goals that you're reaching, that's the work you need to do. You want to be a millionaire, you're going to have to work like one. If you, you know, what, you have to have that same mindset. It's going to get hard. Sometimes you ain't going to want to do nothing. It's times like tomorrow, I said, I'm not going to do nothing. Well, I don't have the privilege of doing that because I've packed my days up, but it's going to be times where you just have to lay in the bed and regroup and get your mind right. That 24 hours that you take to not do nothing, you got to put in 48 more hours to catch up and do what you got to do. So it's really all about you just saying, okay, I got these high revenue goals. I got all this stuff that I want to do. So I got to put in that work. I don't have the finances right now, or I feel like I don't have the resources right now, but what I do have is myself and I have my dream and I have my goal. I have my business. I have my brand. So what I'm going to do is get on YouTube and figure it out. What I'm going to do is look at these Canva tutorials and figure it out. So you just want to make sure that you're investing 100% into your brand of your dreams and really elevating and seeing how can you monetize it? How can you make more money? How can you boost it? If you need help, ask for help. Y'all are in programs like Unity is Wealth and Girl Boss Suites where you got people in the community that you can ask for help. That's why y'all paying per month to, to be in these platforms and programs because y'all need help. Y'all need mentorship. Y'all need business advice. That's why you're here. So if you're not using the resources and the tools that you have to go to the next level, then really it's pointless. So I just really want you guys to focus, write down your goals, um, and like really just go hard for everything that you really, really want. And it'll pay off. This is my ninth year. I'm heading into my ninth year in business. I can't tell y'all it's been easy, but it's been worth it. It's been rewarding. You know what I'm saying? Because I seen this I seen the things that I have now. I dreamed about it. I worked hard. I figured it out. Like um, most of the time it's just me, myself and not doing stuff. But like I'm looking up nine years like, well, dang, it was worth the tears. It was worth the everything that happened to get here because I'm now seeing the fruits of my labor. But oftentimes we give, we give up in 30 days and six months. Oh, I didn't see the money. Oh, I don't have an LLC. I don't have this. I don't have that. But no, you got the dream. So 
monetize it, brand it, be consistent, work hard, and you'll be able to go to the next level in what you want to do. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. That was a lot and it was amazing. Like I was over here like taking notes feverishly. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we put in the chat y'all. So make sure that you scroll through the chat because we put um, almost every single website she said, I, we typed it in. Um, so make sure you look there. But now, like, like Tiara said, you guys are here so that you can get help. So if you have questions, please make sure you utilize this space to um, ask the questions that you need. If you're not comfortable with turning your mic on, drop it in the chat and I'll share it with Tiara. Or if you are comfortable with turning your mic on, please turn it on and ask your questions. I really ain't had no question, but I actually, actually got all my answers for the question that I didn't have, I guess. Oh, okay. That's good. Anybody else? I'm good. All hearts and minds clear. All right, y'all, because Tierra don't play. When she say all hearts and minds clear, that means she ready to get back to the money. Uh, I got like five <laughs> things to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I said. She ready to get back to the money. All right, so if y'all don't have any questions, um, then that that that's it for us for today. That was a lot. Um, I would I would like to give you guys a challenge though, or at least just share this with you. What I'd love for you guys to do is number one, if you did not put your email in the chat uh, for um, Tierra to send you out the content calendar, you really should. We are going to be doing content marketing um, coming up. I think in a couple of weeks. I think it would be amazing for you to have her content calendar because, because I'm going to talk to you about some things that you can talk about that relate to your industry to help talk directly to your audience. And if you have her content calendar, you literally can use that to fill in um, what we're going to talk about. And so I think that that would be amazing for you guys. And then the other thing that I would say um, to you guys is consistency, you all, has always been my problem on social media. I'm very consistent with my clients. I'm very consistent with my training. Y'all know I'm on, I'm on at 745. I do my thing. Like I have some things that I'm really consistent and habitual about. Um, but I will say that social media has not been my consistent space. So my goal for 2021 was to do be consistent, but also be consistent in more videos. So what I'd love for you guys to do is write yourself a note and figure out what you have to tell yourself. How do you have to play with your mind at six inches between your ears? What do you need to do to help yourself be consistent with not just social media, but really utilizing and monetizing your social media to drive revenue? I'm gonna do that challenge myself as well. So I just would love for you guys to, on our next call, I would love to be able to ask you guys, what did you come up with? What, what did you, what did you, um, what did you write to yourself as a note or as a motivational mantra to help you with um, consistently driving revenue through your social media. So hopefully that challenge isn't too difficult, but I love to tell people if I, I'm gonna do it myself as well, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Tierra to hold me accountable. So the next time she sees me, I want her to ask me that question. I want Tiffany, what you gonna do um, to be consistent? So we have a lot of emails in, um, in the chat and Tierra, I will make sure I get the chat um, text to you. So I was just about to say that. I don't know if I'm yeah. going to be able to say these emails, but I was like, y'all could DM me y'all email too so I can send a content calendar. I'll also send y'all some other stuff uh, that I have, uh, like a brand hack checklist um, with all the, the things that I um, put on there as far as like the websites and stuff to use for it. So yeah, if if I don't get the well, you said you're gonna send it to me. So I'll email yeah, I'll time. send it to you. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll they could they will come in a form in the text form, and I'll just pull it out and I'll send you just the email addresses. Okay, yeah, I'll send y'all that in my my brand hacks checklist, and I'll send you a y'all a brand movement ebook so y'all can have everything y'all need to move y'all brand and business forward. All right, so that's the brand hack checklist, and what was the other thing? So I have a brand movement ebook. I'll send them to. 
And you also mentioned your case study. So I'm gonna put I'm putting that in here. So when I open it up, um I'm gonna send, yeah, I was about to send y'all my case study, but I have numbers in there, so I need to tweak it. Um, and I'll, I'll tweak it and resend it out to you. But also, no, you can Google case studies and see. So how it's set up is so companies can book you. So it shows like your client from beginning to the end to how you help them. So if you have a business or product business and you're trying to attract corporate clients, you want to have a case study because they want to see like, okay, so she took this person from here to there. So my case study talks about I had a client who was a lash tech. Um, and she was just doing lashes. So when I met with her, I was like, yo, like you should do, you should sell the lash products. You should do classes and courses. So we did a tour. Um, she did a ebook. Um, she, we made her a whole full cosmetic line. She had an internship program. I worked with her for like eight months. She launched her cosmetic line at Brunner Brothers. Um, and she made all her money back that she invested into her brand. So I show people how you do that. So I could take a, a lady who was just a lash tech. They had a dream of having a brand. I got her on radio shows, speaking engagements, to a cosmetic line, to a product line, to doing tours and classes. She did all this stuff. So that's what my case study shows, how somebody who was making great money doing lashes, I spent in her brand where she was making six plus figures by in the beauty industry because it's a billion dollar industry. So if I can't send y'all my case study because it has sensitive numbers, I just thought about that. Um, you can Google case studies and see like what companies have did for other clients and you definitely want to have one because that's how you are able to attract the bigger contracts because they want to see like what you did how she started what's the statistics how many customers did she reach things like that so make sure you showcase in your business it probably took me like maybe a, maybe like a couple of months to put it together but that'll really take your brand or yes your, your service-based business to the next level by having a, a case study for your company and just to support what Tierra is saying, I, I did my case study on um, Capital One, the Getting Down to Business program. Um, and that did help me because I was able to tell them, you know, what we did, how many people were in the program, how much money was loaned, what all we did and how we followed up with the businesses. I followed up with more businesses um, of people that I had a personal connection with. But even that, that doing that case study actually helped me get a contract with the SBDC. So just knowing that if you have a service, even if you have a product, having a case study, like she said, is really, really good for helping you with taking your business to the next level. And it helps you with getting higher paying clients. That's the main part. Yeah. All right, Vivid Vision. All right, you guys, well, it is 915 and I know Tierra has a lot she needs to do. Um, I appreciate all of you. Um, I'll make sure I get everyone's emails to her so that she can get those things to us. And I appreciate everyone. And you guys have a great evening. Good night, y'all.